it's probably not as disappointing as the one that we started the competition with, to be honest. Um, I felt that that game, while well, the score got away from us, I, I don't think that performance-wise um, we were as far off the mark as we were at the start of the championship. But, um, you know, talking to Gats even before the game and, and then after the game, uh, he was he was talking about that extra 5% you get when you're going for a Grand Slam, that, uh, that really difficult task that, that you're desperately keen to, to achieve and and we benefited from that last year in Twickenham. I think the energy that it gives you, the the, um, the belief that you get from having accumulated those four wins and the desperation to make sure you deliver another one and the way the game started it immediately added to that belief and we uh, we then had to try to force our way back into the game. I, I thought we were a bit unlucky sometimes with a couple of calls, but at the same time, um, I thought they defended well and, and our discipline wasn't quite what we needed it to be. People can be getting overexcited about wins and then at the same time our reacting system to defeats. But I see already this defeat's been called uh, a horror show back in the news back in Ireland as well. Is that a bit of an overreaction thing? So you know that there are simple fixes that we can do to kind of get things right over the next couple well, I guess you guys will set the narrative, really. We, we can only perform in those two 40-minute windows that we get, and then uh, the narrative will be whatever whatever uh, pundits uh, or, or journalists put out there. But for us, we would certainly encourage the genuine supporter not to lose faith with the team, that the team will do, definitely turn up in, in Japan, um, and, uh, and we'll grow a bit from this. You only have to look back a year and see that England went back to back in the championship and ended up fifth. Um, you know, we, we fought our way to third. We're in the top half of the championship. We haven't been catastrophic, but we haven't been as good as we needed to be. And and today was probably uh, an example of that. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I, I'd like to take my hat off to Wales and and to Gats and the 12 years to be 12 years as an international coach. I've done six and it's. Damn near killed me, so I, I don't know how Gats has managed 12 and, uh, and to be as competitive as they have been. And you know, they hadn't won one for for five years, and, and so to get this one, it, it you could see what it meant to them, you could see what it meant to them when they were celebrating. And um, you, you know, for us, uh, while, while we would have loved to have won it, um, you know, hats off to Wales. What, what a super effort today. What a super effort through the championship to come. You know, ironically, we were 16-0 down at half time. So were they against France. And uh, they maybe got a help, helping hand a couple of times in that match to get back into it. But they got back into it and they know how to fight their way through to the finish. Uh, look, I think today we have a couple of couple of big areas of the game that that we really pride ourselves on and, and get us into the game and are usually our set piece um, because of our launch off that and then our discipline. I think both of those let us down today. Um, obviously with the conditions being what they were to, to go so quickly into a 10-0 um, margin behind is incredibly frustrating and it just puts it just puts pressure on you and, and pressure can do can do very strange things to you and just we probably had to force it then a little bit and um, they got the tails up and it was a little bit of a release of pressure for them because the, I'm sure there was a massive amount of pressure and expectations of going into a Grand Slam game we wouldn't know what it was like 12 months ago and all you want is you want to get into the game and you want to fire the first shot and, and they did that and they never looked back so look, we'll take a look at, at why those bits of our that are normally so strong first let us down um, we'll be incredibly disappointed by that Um but look, ultimately, you have to give them credit. They came out, and they came out very, very hard and very fast, and they were able to then go really hard at the defence, and they put us under pressure, and we made errors. Joe, I know we asked you this afternoon, you might have noticed anything in the build-up, and subsequently said you did, and it was different to the France match. Was there anything in the build-up? What match indicated that this performance was on the cards? <sighs> Less so. We had a couple of guys who were, um, who were struggling, who had a... A bug, and um, you know, sometimes that that they they were isolated, and, and you lose a little bit of that continuity. But um, apart from the the six day turnaround, which is always a little bit complicated, we spent the you know the first two or three days of the week recovering, and got a good hit out on Thursday. Really, 
is it as much preparation as you'd like? It's not, but at the same time, that's that's the nature of the draw. I, I remember saying last year, when we did get the Grand Slam, that we knew when we got the draw that there was the potential, um, if we could win away in France, that we could potentially get the Grand Slam. And ironically, um, you know, we, we probably didn't say it, but Gat said it at the start. If they won in France, he felt they could get the Grand Slam. And you know, to be fair to him, that's exactly what they did. Uh, look, obviously, incredibly disappointed. Um, I think sort of no one was. It was my last Six Nations game. You, you kind of want to go out and like you want it to be a fairy tale. And you want to win, and and to win in such a place like this would be would have been a massive, um, a massive statement for the team. But it would have been involved us having a massive performance, which is I suppose ultimately what you want to go out on. You don't want to go out on a on a performance that individually and collectively you're you're not happy with but look it is what it is um whenever the dust settles and and we get 2019 over with i, I look back on the six nations with um a lot of pride with with everything that i've been involved in and achieved and it just happened to be that it wasn't uh it won't be going the highlight reel the last game but like that's the way it is Yeah, again, we're trying to build those two guys forward. Um, they haven't had a huge amount of game time, so I think it's important to invest in people. Um, and that was part of the remit. We decided we were going to prioritise the Six Nations. And whether it bears fruit at the uh, at the other end of this season, uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, as I said, I, I don't get into prognostics. prognostics. All I do is, is try to get into preparation and the best preparation for top class players is to be in pressure cooker situations and to work their way through them. And if every time that isn't going well, you, you take them off. I, I don't think you're, you're growing them back to where they need to be. And um, you know, they, they've had so many um, days in, in the team where they've been the hub upon which the wheel has turned and, and the wheel has generally gone forward. Um, as I said, you know, over the last two years, we, we've played 26 tests and, and lost three of them. And uh, you know, to lose today is, is, is really tough. But um, those, those two guys are not the reason we lost. And uh, those two guys will continue to invest in, just as we have in, in Jack Carty and getting Kieran Marmion back. I thought he came on and did really well. And John Cooney's acquitted himself well in the, in the earlier part of the championship. So, you, you just keep trying to grow people and, and you keep trying to keep your confidence in them so they keep their confidence in themselves. Yeah, we have and that was, that was part of the plan before the, the championship where, you know, I remember we won our first championship in my time six years ago. Uh, we used 17 different starters. Um, you know, it's, 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 we've almost got out to double that number who've played. Um, well, over double that number who've played. So for us, it's, it's been a really good exercise in, in trying to make sure that some guys have been put into pressure cooker situations. Some have acquitted themselves better than others. And we have to look back at the entire championship and see, you know, who, who, who still needs further work. And some of uh, what I was saying before is, some of the players haven't actually had a lot of game time and, and it is hard to get your game rhythm if you haven't played and I, I do think those, those, some of those players are getting closer to their top form and, and we hope that they progress through the back end of the season and then they use that as a springboard into, into the, uh, the end of the year. Two of the three defeats you mentioned, we've conceded a try almost at the very start of the game. Is that a concentration issue or is it just super execution from your opponent? Yeah, I, I, I can't really answer the question. Um, it's, it's difficult to say that it's a concentration effort uh, because you tend to be concentrating the most when the game starts. That's when you're freshest mentally. So we know that fatigue or dehydration has a, an impact on the ability to cognitively um, function. But, uh, you know, disappointingly, um, you know, it, it, I think 
they were quite different tries. One was certainly uh, we contributed to ourselves. It was after 10 phases that England got back to the same place where they'd been after the line out. And then we made a defensive error. And then, uh, you know, today, uh, again, I, I just think that we could have done better. But I thought Gareth's kick was, was pinpoint perfect and Hadley Parks got straight through onto it. We'd show in a couple that he'd done during the week uh, because he, he, he's, he's already done them during the championship and he did them certainly in the November series as well. So it was something that we were aware of and, uh, and we've got to be better at covering next time. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. You'd have to ask. I, I'm sure. I'm sure they, that that teams will, on their day, sometimes get the better of you and sometimes not. Um, it's such a fine margin. Um, yeah, I, I think Wales today in the conditions, they got the benefit of of some set piece decisions and uh, and on the back of that maintain the pressure that they got off, off that first try. And uh, in the conditions today, we, we actually said that they'd do exactly what they did in those first two minutes. So, um, you know, working, working a team out, uh, you know, even sometimes you know what a team's going to do. It's another thing to stop them. Um, and, and we felt that, that England would, would do what they did as well, and it was, it was difficult to stop them. England knew what we were going to do in Twickenham last year but we were difficult to stop. And so uh, on any given day, that's the very highest level of Test Rugby where the, the margins are fine. Uh, on any given day, when you get the momentum at the start of the game, it is hard to, to then swing the momentum back in your favour. And that, that's a challenge for any team.